good morning everyone so welcome back so let us go through the recap of what we have learned yesterday okay let me share you my screen okay so just i will start from uh, very beginning uh, first we have learned what is decisioning versus marketing decisioning features to identify the next best action marketing features to deliver the next best action and uh, we have learned um, about the prerequisites for learning pega decisioning that means in order to learn pega decisioning what all you need to have okay so then we have seen the cdh portal and uh, prediction studio okay so cdh portal is where we do the work and prediction studio models will be there so then yesterday we started with first topic that is list of mandatory services which needs to be enabled what are the services that you have to enable for decisioning? So we have ADM, DDS, RTDG, real time, and stream background crossing. So each and every service is responsible for some particular feature in decisioning. ADM is for models, adaptive model, predictive model, DDS decision data store this is for cassandra so for cassandra this is the one and uh, rtdg rtdg is real time data grid so real time data grid and real time are for real time features in pega decisioning and stream and background processing you already know stream is for queue processors and background processing for agents and job generation and all that so these are all services you have to enable them in the environment using node classification using node classification you have to enable them so i told you how to do node classification and some of you already asked some questions also so you have to go to this path personalization and tomcat bin folder open set tnv.bat file with notepad and uh, then set hyphen d not type equal to the adm comma like this you need to set it so then you have to verify whether these are set normally or not first you have to verify in the admin studio you can go to admin studio click on notes you have to see whatever the values that you have set Second verification you have to do in Dev Studio in configure decisioning infrastructure. So here all the list of services will be displayed to you and what is the status of the service. If the status is not normal, then you have to raise a restart request to your administrator. So when they restart again it will become normal so this is what we have seen in the first step of preparation second step of preparation is cassandra you have to have a meeting with the business and tell the business about the advantages of cassandra that is the scalability and availability scalability being performance will be very good even with lot of customers availability means how it will be available throughout the time so you have to recommend this to the business okay so the third thing that we have seen here is the uh, context dictionary so there is one very important feature in pega that is called context dictionary so in this context dictionary we basically context is nothing but audience so you can say like audience dictionary audience dictionary means what you have to define all the list of audience in your application okay 
you have to define all the list of audience in your application because every time you send an email you don't need to always specify where is the customer present what is the email id what is the mobile number do you want to send to customer or do you want to send to non customer so all these things you don't need to do every single time so you just need to define it one place that is a context dictionary with what is your primary context which is your main targeted audience then you can have multiple secondary contexts which are uh, you can say like less targeted audience so basically what we do here is you will give the class name the table name where the data is present and also what is the email id property what is the mobile number property so that every time you are sending an email from that property value the campaign will be able to send the emails or sms or whatever it is so this is the context dictionary which is used every time you do some marketing so this is what we have seen and then we have started creating the application using setup wizard so previous to 8.8 .8 version okay previous to 8.8 .8 version uh, we have to do two things we have to download car data model or you call it as x car which means what this will do is this will create some ootb classes for you okay so this will create some ootb classes for you and some ootb properties so why why this is needed means see you don't need to create everything from scratch see uh, for example you are configuring the customer class but you have to create a customer table you have to create a customer class you have to create the properties so all this is automatically done by this model car data model that is called car data model you can download it in the online itself so for example if you are working for a banking project what kind of data model will be there like emi monthly emi what is the civil score what is the credit score what is the loan tenure this kind of properties will be there for a banking project so all these sample properties and sample classes will be created for you so that you don't need to create them again from the starting so then next thing is nbad template also will be there which will actually create you sample categories and sample offers For example you are taking the same banking project the template will create some categories like personal loans housing loans and credit cards debit cards like this sample offers means what the bank will promote generally credit card some abc credit card xyz credit card like that some sample offers will also be installed with this template so that you can just customize that instead of creating again and again okay just you can save as and you can customize so these two things you have to do manually when you are not using 8.8 .8. but the advantage is setup wizard will install everything okay it will install everything whatever you need for your domain okay nothing to be done just you can start the implementation right away after you create the application with setup wizard so this is what we have seen yesterday and i hope all of you are clear let me know if you are not clear any one of you so again i will share the recording we will share the notes we will share the ppt so anytime you have any doubt you can refer any one of these three okay daily recording daily notes i am saving in the system you will be getting that in the whatsapp so any questions or any confusion till here and uh, no i am good so now let us start with the day 3 So 
yeah from cdh portal when i am going through prediction studio it is saying like add access group add access group so you 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 open the same url i gave uh, from cloud i have opened ravi so we will we will connect at the end of the session okay okay so let us get into the day 3 today is the final demo of the course so by by monday please every one of you enroll to the course okay every one of you enroll to the course so that you can continue with the uh, sessions from monday onwards now yesterday we created the application i am going to <coughs> log in i believe the application might be gone but anyways i am going to create healthcare related uh, logic only okay so no no need to worry about that we will create everything related to healthcare <coughs> so <coughs> now that you created an application let us walk through uh, about the application okay So what I will do, I will go to the application in Dev Studio. So what we will do is we will understand uh, basically what is this application uh, has created for us. Okay, that's what we will be learning. So assume that this is my application, which is which is created very fresh. Now what are the rules or what are the things that are created for us? let us have an overview of that so when you go to the application newly created application definition so you will be having two things on the right side so just see this one uh, actually ignore this one this is organization rule set i think two things first one is called uh, artifact rule uh, yeah. ravi i can't see your pega screen I am also unable to see. So I am sharing again. So now you are able to see, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so what we have done is I have gone to application definition, and in the application definition, there are two things which are there. <clears throat> First one is artifact rule set. Second one is NBAD test rule set. so whenever you create a decisioning application uh, these two things are automatically created okay so i'll say overview of new application okay so whenever you create an application this is these two things are generated <coughs> so when you create a pega bpm application this will not be created so let us understand what is the purpose of these two rule sets the first one is artifacts rule set you can see here it artifacts nbad tests so the purpose of these two rule sets is what we are going to understand now so okay again i have to share so the artifacts rule set main purpose is it is used to store auto generated rules created by wizard okay artifacts rule set is the top most rule set in your application okay <clears throat> artifacts rule set is the top most rule set in your application it is used to store all auto generated rules that are created by the wizard so that means yesterday we created the application using setup wizard i showed you some rules are automatically created any auto created rules in decisioning application will go directly to artifacts rule set artifacts rule set is used like used like a production rule set in decisioning okay production rule set in decisioning applications so that means for example in production you got some error or you got some issue or you have to do some modification you can directly do that in artifacts rule set 
the reason is in decisioning you will run lot of wizards okay like you will do some setup and uh, something will be created in the back end okay in decisioning application you will do some uh, wizard and you do some setup some rules will cre create in the back end so that is the reason what you have to do is always highest version should be unlocked always highest version should be unlocked because if you lock the rule set version then you are you will not be able to run the wizard okay because in pega marketing also you create some rules and uh, it will auto create something in the back end so always highest version of artifacts rule set should be unlocked so that the auto generated rules will be able to create automatically without any error so since auto since highest version is unlocked you can use this as a production rule set also you want to update something in the production you can do that then this is the rule set used by business people in order to do some testing generally in your application also most of the time the business want to do some testing they want to update some features they want to add the data by themselves for all that purpose also we can use artifacts rule set okay because this rule set is unlocked highest version will be always unlocked even in production also okay so then next thing is it is on top of hierarchy and uh, you can use it for any poc or uh, technical feasibility okay that means uh, like for example you have some something that you are not aware like you you are you have to do some poc you have to do some technical feasibility check you can do that in artifacts rule set okay so all these reasons basically we have artifacts rule set okay first and most important reason is to store auto generated rules in pega decisioning and pega marketing both the places when you do some action some auto generated rules are created to store those rules you have to keep this rule set highest version as unlocked so then you can use it as production rule set you can use it by business you can use it as for doing poc clear on this artifacts rule set here So that is one thing. Now let us go into. Uh, the Generally, in the Pega uh, normal Pega, we do have production rule set uh, separate, right? So in this, uh, you are saying that artifact rule is nothing but production rule set. I mean, we can also use it for production rule set. That's what you are correct. saying. Correct, correct, correct. For for any decisioning related, okay. For any decisioning related, you can use it, but not for uh, core Pega like BPM related. For BPM related, you can use production rule set. Okay, for any decisioning related changes, you have to use artifacts rule set. Got it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. See, decisioning related means what? You will come to know like strategies, models, all these are decisioning features. They, they, those you need to keep it in artifacts. But data transforms activities which are Pega BPM, those you can keep it in rules rule set or production rule set. Okay. So, this is the uh, main purpose of having artifacts rule set. The second rule set that we have is NBAD tests rule set. So, NBAD tests stands for next best action designer rule set okay nbad stands for next best action designer tests you can say designer tests rule set so this is simply very simple this is nothing but uh, the test cases rule set uh, for decisioning application okay this is nothing but a test cases rule set for decisioning application okay the reason is uh, see in core pega uh, for example, you are doing unit testing. What you will do? You will create a test cases rule set separately 
and you will mark the category as used for test cases. But whatever features are there in decisioning, for those, you cannot use that uh, same rule set, test cases rule set. There is some separate dedicated rule set is there. That is the NBAD tests. Okay. So for storing test cases in decisioning, we have to use this one. Second thing is any kind of testing that you do or like any kind of testing that you do uh, with sample customer or sample data, you have to keep it in uh, NBAD test rule set. You have created a logic strategy logic uh, that strategy um, you want to test it. Okay, you created some strategy you want to test it. So that testing you have to do it in NBAD tests. So NBAD test rule set you don't need to deploy it to anywhere. Only for storing unit test cases and any testing rules that you created you can keep it there. Okay. So that is the purpose of this uh, NBAD tests. And just like I told you, the PEGA marketing, right? PEGA marketing will also uh, trigger some testing. That means directly in the CDH portal, you can test some features. So those also will create some auto generated tests. Okay. See, for example, in PEGA marketing, uh, there is a wizard where you can actually test something. So when you do that testing in the back end, some rule will be created that will also be created in NBAD tests. Okay. So this NBAD tests rule set is purely for testing purpose and for storing some test cases. Okay. That is about this NBAD tests. So these are the two rule sets that you need to be aware and what is the purpose of that. Artifacts rule set to store auto generated rules always highest version should be kept unlocked in production also and any kind of uh, production related changes you have to do it in artifacts rule set and if the business want to do some modifications or some changes you can ask them to keep it in this rule set and any kind of POC or technical feasibility that also you can do it in this rule set artifacts rule set NBAD test is used for storing test cases of your desisting application. Any kind of testing rules, you have to keep it in NBAD tests. Okay. So this is about the two rule sets that we have. Okay. So I hope that it is clear. Now, now what we will do. Hmm. Okay. Any questions till here? Uh, for artifact rules, you are saying used by business people in order to some testing, right? So why do I mean they can't use uh, NBAD test rule set because this is also part of uh, test cases rule set, right? No, it's I mean to say not testing that is uh, they want to update something. Okay. So for example, uh, business will say uh, I want to update the strategy logic. Okay. Mm. So that is not testing actually. They want to modify. They want like to do some things. Delegated decision table, something like that. Right, right. Decision table, decision trees, all that. Okay. Sometimes they also want to do some decisioning related things. Okay. Like where is wherever it is critical, uh, there they want to do some changes. For example, something is very close to customer. They don't want to reveal that customer information. At the time, they will say that I want to add the changes like that. There can be a number of scenarios. We can't tell, but that will yeah. happen. Okay. Okay. So these two are the uh, rule sets that you need to remember. Okay. And what is the purpose of that? Now let us understand the context dictionary. So I was telling you about context dictionary. So where is the context dictionary? See, so go to App Studio. Within the App okay. Studio. Uh, notepad, we are able to see only the notepad as of now. Notepad, okay. Ah. So I'm sharing the screen now. So if you see the screen now, what I did is I went to the App Studio. Okay. So I went to the App Studio. Okay. In the App Studio. You have to go to the settings 
and settings context dictionary this is where you can see the context dictionary so context means what context means audience so if the business want to promote to 10 type of audience you need to create 10 context here okay so this is simply like you are telling the pega that all the audiences are here and here this is how the context dictionary look like so just simply in order to add the context you just click on add context then you can start adding the uh, what is the uh, audience name for example social media followers like this okay, like this you give and here plural word you should not give uh, space just remove the space here and no need to give in capitals give it in small letters social media follower okay so i'm giving here plural name social media follower and here you have to give what is the class name so that means every time you have to do some promotion then it will ask you uh, it will not ask you where is that social media follower information is present okay because you are already defining here if you define here then it will take it from here only where that social media follower uh, information is present the table name that is a class name you have to give it here so if you see the existing thing for example customer this is automatically created with the wizard the setup wizard which we have done yesterday so when i click here you see this is the class name and uh, after you give the class name it will ask you what is the full name what is the email id what is the mobile number property so that whenever you say send an email then directly to this particular property whatever value is there in that property uh, that value it will send the email for example you will say send an sms then directly whatever mobile number is there here in this property to this number it will send the sms so that is the advantage of this context dictionary where you create what is the uh, context name where the context is present this is the class in that class what are these properties below only you will have associated context also so what is associated context like whatever the data that is associated with this context like existing loans existing products or existing services that they have or whatever internet plans they have all this is considered as associated context so that also how you need to configure within the same context class you have to create like a page list or uh, page list page list property then that page list you have to map it to the data class where the product information is present okay like that you have to do so you have to create an association also that association rule you have to create it but all these are automatically created with the setup wizard whenever you want to customize you can customize this okay now at any given point of time you will have only one primary context but there can be multiple secondary context whenever you don't want to promote to customer simply you can select uh, change primary click on change primary select the other context then you click on apply that's it okay so right now this is my primary context i can change primary context wherever whenever i want i can do that and you click on apply so they account will become the primary context from then onwards okay so this is the purpose of this context dictionary so best example i will show you let us say i go to cdh so from cdh i will go to left side segments we'll come to this topic okay later but let us say i click on create when i click on create so you see here automatically it is saying select the context okay it is saying select the context customer prospect whatever it is account will not come basically account is some otb related otb thing but these two are there in the context dictionary that's the reason these two are coming 
so that means directly the topics will take from the context dictionary you don't need to again specify what is the audience where it is present all that simply you select to whom you want to promote okay like that you have to select when you make account as primary then uh, you can have you can see account here okay you will see account here okay so like that it will be there so whichever primary audience is there that will be automatically selected okay i hope that you are following but uh, just uh, remember uh, context dictionary is very important which is auto created with the um, wizard okay so just i'm typing the notes here okay context dictionary we can access the context dictionary from go to app studio app studio settings context dictionary okay then you can say first you have to create so if you want to do it manually i am showing you this is the procedure add context then give the new context name that is the audience name and uh, you you will give what is what is the class right what is the class where the audience is present okay and what is the email id property what is a mobile number property everything you have to give it here and you click on apply that's it that is how you create the context dictionary okay so that is about this uh, context dictionary here yeah you can you can try actually you can try to actually create the application whoever did not do uh, please create the application if you want to add it manually then this is the procedure all right so now context dictionary is also configured now let us start with the implementation part for decisioning how do i get started with decisioning implementation after i create the first decisioning application what is the first step that i need to do okay see now that we have prepared the environment we have created the application everything is automatically created setup is completed successfully what i should do after the application is created okay after the application is created what i have to do the very first first step what you have to do is configuring the business taxonomy or business structure what is this business taxonomy or business structure so this is nothing but um, actually like uh, you can say this is something like uh, uh, we have to configure the business structure of whom you want to promote so for example you want to promote the, the let us say healthcare right in our uh, in our project we are going to promote healthcare so you have to ask the healthcare business whom you are promoting what is your business structure so what is your business structure means you have to get three details the first one is business issue second one is business group third one is propositions so the business taxonomy or also called as business structure has three things business issue business group propositions so this is these three things you have to ask the business so what is this business issue business group and propositions so business issue is nothing but basically what you have to ask in business issue is what is the reason for promotion okay why do you want to promote basically you ask the business what is the reason for promotion okay uh, see business let, let us say healthcare right here abc healthcare the abc healthcare uh, you have to ask them what is the reason for promotion so let us say the abc healthcare will say um, in order to increase the customers i am promoting basically all these are the first steps of your implementation right so you have to ask the business what is the reason for promotion 
why do you want to promote in order to increase the customers let us say or in order to increase the sales or revenue or let us say in order to maintain existing customers like this so like this they will give you a lot of reasons okay they will give you a lot of reasons those reason for promotion is called as business issue okay those reason for promotion is called as business issue okay see basically what we are going what we are seeing right now is the application is set up we have created the decisioning application using the setup wizard the very first step after you do is configuring the business taxonomy okay what is the reason that you want to promote so they will tell you different different reasons i want to increase customers i want to get new customers i want to maintain existing customers i want to get more revenue like this so those we have to configure it as business issue like that is sales i want to increase the sales i want to acquire, acquire new customers okay i want to maintain existing customers like i want to send a, a monthly weekly digest emails monthly emails newsletters like that i want to let us say uh, retain the existing customers okay let us say um, there are two uh, hospitals are there so one hospital and another hospital both of them are competitors okay every customer is going to the competitor and uh, existing customers are not coming to the hospital okay so they want to retain the existing customers like they want to give some discount they want to give some free medical service all these things okay so in that scenario the reason is nothing but what retention so overall business issue is nothing but retention okay business issue nothing but reason for promotion okay so every business will have different different reasons that reason we have to capture as business issue next business group so i'm giving here business issue is nothing but the reason for promotion business group is nothing but the category of promotion okay so for example if you take abc healthcare uh, let us say a healthcare company so they have these reasons why they want to promote means they want to increase the revenue for that reason they are promoting now what they want to promote that category we call it as business group okay for example uh, they want to promote uh, medicines okay they want to promote medicines let us say or pharmacy kits okay if you take a banking uh, what they want to promote they want to promote credit cards if you take an e-commerce company the e-commerce company want to promote laptops mobiles so this is called as business group okay business group is category of what you are promoting okay for example i want to promote a uh, let us say uh, dell laptop okay dell i7 dell i7 laptop okay i want to promote dell i7 laptop with uh, let us say from 256 db uh, hard disk this is the offer this is the product that i want to promote okay this is the product i want to promote so this this will come under which category this will come under laptops category so that category of promotion is called as business group so okay just identify and understand the difference between issue and group issue means what is the reason or you can say what is the purpose of promotion right the purpose of promotion that is the business issue and business group is the category of promotion like i want to promote a uh, let us say some samsung galaxy phone which will come under mobiles category so then what is proposition proposition is nothing but the promotion itself okay whatever you want to promote that is called proposition or simply you can remember this as anything that you propose to the customer why it is called promotion why it is called proposition 
can't we call it as offer can't we call it as product means anything that you promote right anything that you propose anything that you promote that is called proposition because i can promote an offer i can promote a service i can promote a discount i can promote a coupon i can promote a product so there are so many things there are so many things if you want to promote there are so many things that you can promote so you can't say offer because product if you are promoting product then this name is not valid you can't say product because if you are promoting a coupon then this name will not be valid so generic name for that is called proposition propositions means anything that you propose to the customer is called as proposition it can be offer it can be service it can be some discount it can be some coupon code it can be some product anything business will have so many things anything that you promote that is called proposition so these are the three things that you will get from the business which you have to ask from the business in order to get started okay so is it clear yes ravi yeah okay so that is a business uh, issue Bas yeah one thing to ask so when we configure that uh, business contact um, the contest dictionary so for the customer part we have given one record as a you know first name last name the whole thing uh, phone number so can it be a list or will it be only one customer at a time so i'm not following what you're telling uh so when we configured the this uh, context dictionary okay so on the right hand side we gave the first name last name all the customer details one particular customer details on the class we have given so can we give a list there uh or will it only be one customer at a time no we cannot give one customer at a time we have to give list only okay okay yeah okay. thank you so now coming to the business taxonomy uh, let's see how to add this taxonomy in the uh, in the application okay business issue business group propositions so this is the very first step which you have to do after you create the application that is a business issue business group propositions so let us go to the application so you know, we have sure. yeah i am sharing so if you go to the dev studio so then here what you have to do how do i configure business taxonomy business taxonomy you can configure in configure decisioning decisions proposition management hierarchy okay so this is where you configure business taxonomy okay so just you have to come to configure decisioning decisions proposition management hierarchy here you can add the taxonomy so by default there will be empty this is a sample application that's why you are seeing some existing taxonomy first thing that we have to add is business issue so if you notice there are already some business issues are there which means some reasons why they want to promote for example acquire collections grow they want to grow nurture they want to nurture they have retain retain means they want to retain the customer service in order to provide some service that is a reason for promotion okay so service these are all the reasons these are all the reasons for which they want to promote so okay that is nothing but business issue let us add one more reason that is business issue <clears throat> you click on add new business issue and <clears throat> here you give sales for example i give sales and i click on create
okay so i selected sales i clicked on create this is the business issue which i want to promote now the business issue is created now we have to create business groups so i click add new group and here i will give the new group for example let us give something related to healthcare i'll give it as medicines okay sales medicines that means the business want to increase the sales of medicines so the reason is sales group is medicines so then here i select the business issue as sales okay and you can create it in rules rule set then you just click on create okay so i have created sales so, so here my scenario is sales and medicines uh, for example now i'll add one more let us say i come here add business group i will give here something like uh, pharmacy kits or something like that okay pharmacy kit or something like this i'm giving i'll give the business issue as sales and uh, here uh, let us say i will click on create rules rule set okay select rules rule set and click on create so now there is one reason two categories okay there is one reason two categories the reason is sales the categories are medicines and pharmacy kits these are the two things now let us add the propositions so for example i'll click on medicines then i will go to the medicines here on the right side then you can add the propositions which is nothing but anything that you propose to the customer anything that you promote to the customer that is called proposition so now i click on new then here i will add the name let's say i add something like uh, covid 19 uh, injection or something like this okay covid 19 injection or something or vaccine you can give like for example covid 19 vaccine and uh, like you can give the description here uh, dosage 1 covid 19 vaccine so this is one medicine that i am adding so that is how you add the proposition here so it will come just you have to refresh sometimes so some error with the product okay or let me check in this is so you see now yeah so you see this is some error actually some error with the product actually but anyways that is added okay that is added you don't need to worry so uh, now we have one business issue one business uh, two business groups and one for, uh, one proposition okay so that is how you need to add the business issue business group and proposition so if you see the structure how we have created the structure so i am sharing the notes again so here if you scroll down we created business issue as sales under sales medicines then pharmacy kits under medicines we have covid 19 medicine that is covid 19 vaccine so this is the business issue this is the business issue that is the reason for promotion what is the reason why you want to promote that is the reason medicines is the category of promotion okay category of promotion and finally the third one is the proposition proposition this is a proposition so you can have hundreds of proposition in real time project so that is nothing but anything that you propose to the customer generally we call it proposition now the business issue is present in the property called py issue okay this is a property name business group is present in the property called py group and proposition is present in the property called py name 
So remember this property names, py issue, py group, py name. These are the property names where in the backend where it will be stored. Okay, in the, in this property, we will understand more about the backend properties, how to see the backend rule, whenever you create this, what happens in the backend. All these things we'll see it in the tomorrow session. Okay, but for today, just understand the taxonomy. Taxonomy contains three components: business issue, business group, proposition. Business issue is the reason. Business group is the category. Business uh, proposition is the offer that you promote. Okay, you can get started and practice this thing. Okay, uh, and you can do that. Any questions before we close? Uh, uh, Ravi, yes, Ravi. Um, yeah. Because even I don't have anything like personal edition in my laptop, so I will install everything. But you know, unless if I don't get recordings, I'm not able to start. <laughs> uh this evening so at least you know if you if i get recordings by tomorrow at least saturday so that you know mm -hmm. I, I can so you have already enrolled you have already enrolled i am going to mm, yeah so you can enroll they will okay. share it to you and post it in the group okay sure. so they, they are posting in the group once you enroll you can see them oh okay okay i was not yeah. aware okay I just asked them, so I'll pay the uh, amount. Okay. Okay. No worries. Okay. Okay, guys. So all of you enroll by Monday. Uh, today is the last demo session, third demo session. By Monday, please enroll, and you will be added to the group where you can proceed with the next sessions. I will share this PPTs and the notes in the group WhatsApp group. You can go through and you can practice it. Any any other questions? Yeah, can you share the link of that CDH portal? Okay, I'm sharing it in the chat. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, hi, Ken. So I'm the one who said that yesterday I was not able to log in, and, uh, not able to edit that, uh, uh, send. ENV something like that, right? Yesterday in the group, I was too. Yeah, we will connect uh, separately. Okay. You are in the group right already. I will connect with you on the chat. Okay. Thanks. I shared the link in the chat. You can go through. All of you. Fine. So just uh, enroll, guys. Everyone, whoever haven't enrolled, please enroll. We will connect again on Monday. Uh, same time. So looking forward to see you all. Uh, I'll share everything in the group. Notes and recording, everything is shared in the WhatsApp group. So you can practice them. Okay, see you all on Monday.